Welcome boys and girls, Dr. Dave here. Today we're going to be learning about clay. What it is, where it comes from, and how it's been used by the Kumeyaay. For those who don't know, the Kumeyaay are one of the region's many indigenous peoples who have called Southern California and Imperial Valley home for thousands of years. Clay is a valuable resource to help the Kumeyaay survive and thrive in our area. Let's catch up with our team to see what we can learn about clay. Hello, my name is Corey and I'm an education specialist here at IVDM. Right now, my job is to teach you what clay is, so let's get started. Clay is a natural material made up of tiny pieces of rock called sediment. If the Kumeyaay found a chunk of clay just like David has given me here, they could easily break it down into sediments using a mano and metate, also known as a mortar and pestle, like I have right here. Sediments are super small pieces of rock broken off from other rocks, usually through grinding. However, rocks can also be broken down by wearing it away with water, aka erosion. When clay sediment is mixed with water, it feels like a soft, gluey mud that sticks to itself strongly. It kind of looks like mud too, but it is different because mud is often chunky. This is because mud is made up of different sized sediments, whereas clay is only made up of the smallest sediments. These small sediments attract each other more than those in mud, allowing clay to stick to itself better than mud can. This is the reason that clay can be pinched, rolled, or coiled, which is also known as plasticity, to form shapes of all kinds. Clay is a useful building material because it hardens as it dries. Once your clay is dry, you are ready for the next step. Right, Luis? Hey, boys and girls. I'm Luis, an education specialist at IVDM. It can take about two weeks for clay to dry and become ready to be fired. Fired is a term being used for clay when it is heated and hardened through the use of fire. Traditionally, the Kumeyaay used open fire pits, but often today we use either ovens or kilns like the ones we have here. When the clay is fired, it becomes more durable, but it still has the ability to be shattered if enough force is applied to it. Using clay was a delicate process because clay was not always easy to come by. It was very important for the Kumeyaay to be careful when creating and handling their clay. For this reason, many people perform an additional step, known as tempering, to increase the strength of their oyas and prevent cracking or shriveling during firing. Let's check in with the museum curator to tell us more about this process. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen and I'm the museum curator here. And that means that I take care and organize all the artifacts you see here. As Louise was saying, temper is a bonding agent that is mixed in with the clay before shaping it. Temper can be organic or geological and often consists of things like bone, charcoal, wood, ash, crushed sandstone or limestone, crushed igneous rocks, and in some cases, crushed shells. It really just depended on the local resources the potter had. If you ever look at a broken piece of pottery, you can see signs of the type of temper used. Organic materials, like the plant fiber in wood, would burn off during firing, leaving air pockets behind. The geological temper, such as the crushed igneous rocks, can actually be visibly seen and are referred to as inclusions. The type of temper in clay tells you a lot about where the potter got their resources from. For example, salt and buff clay uses beach sand as temper because that is what was found in its area. This helps archaeologists track down where the pottery they find was made. Thanks, Kristen. Making an oya required about a month of dedicated work by the Kumeyaay people. Archaeologists in our region have discovered pieces of pottery, bowls and pots, that are between 500 to 1,000 years old, which goes to show just how well these tools were crafted. Behind me, we have a model showing the different layers of rock and sediments. These layers are different colors and textures. This is because they were all made at different times from each other, with irregular amounts and types of materials. Over time, the layers of rock pile up on each other. This means that the rocks in the lower layer are older than the ones on top. Within these rock layers, we also have what? Clay. But why is that? Luis, can you help us out here? You guys are back for some more info already? The main reason the Imperial Valley has clay is because of the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon was carved over millions of years by the Colorado River that flows through its base. When the Colorado River was carving out the Grand Canyon, making it even more grand, large amounts of the removed sediment were brought into the Imperial Valley, and with them came different types of clay. 
Let's dig up some information on the different types of clay found here in the Imperial Valley. There is Tizan brown clay, salt and buff clay, salt and brown clay, and Ocotillo buff clay. These clays are unique based on their color, weight, and texture. However, the main difference between these clays is where they are found around the Imperial Valley, and this affects what they are made out of. As said before, pottery in Imperial Valley is only 500 to 1,000 years old, but if properly preserved, it can last many lifetimes. Here at the Imperial Valley Desert Museum, we have a large collection of this pottery in the form of locally found ollas. Olla is the Spanish word for pot. The Kumiai first called them Ascai and Sakai. As you can see, the ollas are different in shape, color, and size because they were used for different things. The Kumiai used them for storing water, food, and supplies, as well as for cooking. Angelina is going to show you the first steps the Kumiai used for the last thousand years to create these ollas. Hey guys, Angelina here, and I'm the education coordinator at the museum. Now you have learned about clay, where it comes from, and how it was used. Wouldn't you like to try it out? Now I'm going to show you one of the first steps into making an olla. If you have clay at home or in the classroom, go ahead and grab some. If you don't, it's okay. Get your hands on some Play-Doh. Now that we have clay or Play-Doh that we can use, let's begin making an olla. The ollas are made through the coil clay method. A piece of clay is rolled out into a long snake. Try it out now. In your classroom or at home, start rolling some clay or Play-Doh into long snakes. If you use your classroom desk, table at home, or hard surface, it helps you roll out the snakes easier and more evenly. Once you have a long even snake, it can be wrapped onto itself to form the sides and the base of the pot. The coil clay should look like a spiral as so. Let's practice rolling another snake, then coiling it just like we did before. You've done a great job, and I hope you've learned a lot today. Take the rest of the time to make whatever you want out of your clay and Play-Doh. Have fun. We'll see and learn with you next time.